um, former First Lady Rosalind Carter, uh, she recently passed away. And she had a quote, and the quote is, the only way not to be criticized is to be mediocre. Uh, Gus Alfieri was a lot of things, but mediocre was not one of them. Um, even to those uh, that loved him, he could come across as uh, aggressive, uh, angry. Um, he cared how he was perceived by his peers um, and by the community that he belonged to. Uh, he just didn't give enough of a shit to actually change uh, his decisions and his behaviors. Um, I was in the room when, uh, at the old St. Anthony's uh, during camp when uh, Mr. Atkinson and Kenny Atkinson came uh, into the room to talk to my dad about transferring from Northport to St. Anthony's. And we listened, um, and after they left, my dad asked me what I thought and uh, in, in an exchange that clearly defined our uh, respective personalities, I suggested that he tell Kenny and his dad not to come, that people would think that he recruited, that, uh, that he recruited Kenny uh, and that uh, you know, he would, he would uh, catch grief for, you know, for that recruitment. Uh, let me check here. Yeah, there's a couple, so we're gonna change this. Uh, he had a brief two-word profane response <laughs> that ended with them. Uh, he, he said, uh, he would go on to say that he knew what he did, he didn't do anything wrong, uh, he didn't give a damn about how others would judge him, uh, he knew he was ethically and morally correct. His combative approach to life was a straight line back to uh, August and uh, Jenny Alfieri in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, uh, who had a son named August Michael Alfieri back in December of 1936. Uh, his dad, I just learned, was Wall Street, but he was known to be a house painter uh, and an alcoholic. Um, his mom was a homemaker, a loving mother, uh, and a tough SOB. Um, Legend has it that my grandfather had done a paint job for a local mafia boss. They exist in Brooklyn, evidently, back then. Uh, and that boss refused to pay for the job. And my grandmother went, knocked on the door, and got the money. Um, she wouldn't take no for an answer. Um, clearly, my dad learned uh, at an early age how to be tough. Uh, their home was chaotic, as could be expected but he found salvation at the courts in St. Cecilia's, the local parish. Uh, his talent and hard work owned, uh, earned him a scholarship to St. Francis Prep uh, and then to St. John's University. Uh, he loved playing uh, for Joe Lapchick, his the legendary coach, uh, so much so that Lapchick uh, used to be the password for all of his various email addresses, <laughs> as all of his family knows. Uh, his career at St. John's was topped off uh, two months ago, on October 24th, when they inducted him into uh, the Hall of Fame, that's the jacket and the, the, the board that uh, was made in his honor. Uh, we were so grateful that he got the experience that evening. Um, the whole family was there and so many people from various parts of his life, from the book club to camp coaches to family to uh, kids from camp, um, they were all there to celebrate uh, with him. Uh, after having the childhood he had, after having the childhood he had, um, my dad's very core is that he wanted his life to have meaning. He he wanted to matter. Uh, coaching 19 years uh, at St. Anthony's was also chaotic. Uh, he often battled the students uh, and administration when perceived and real slights uh, came his way. Uh, I had many alumni tell me that the shared experience uh, of innocently walking into the gym at 4.30 in the afternoon after track practice was over uh, and hearing only to have, hear the roar, get out of my gym, which <laughs> would send them scattering back to wherever they came from until practice was over. From 2.45 to 5 o'clock, that was my dad's gym and 
you learn you didn't go in. Loyalty and devotion was a two-way street uh, with my dad. A lot of his former players are here. They would do anything for him, and he would do anything uh, for them. Uh, he won two state championships, uh, won over 300 games, um, an infinite number of memories uh, forged uh, from players, coaches, opponents, uh, and fans alike. Uh, we had someone come in here, uh, you know, back in the day, he'd run up and down the sideline in an opposing gym, and everybody knew to say, Sit down, Gus. And that was like he was proud of that. Like that, he, as he said, you know, "Who's the coach of St. Pius?" I don't know. They know me. You know, they don't know who that guy is. Um, his teams played with uh, defense through sheer willpower exhibited uh, by their coach. Uh, he was able to reach down and find the energy uh, and the focus, concentration, and enthusiasm to play that hard for that long. He taught things that would help you become a man. Uh, to learn how to take a shot and bounce back up, and to do everything with his favorite word, enthusiasm. Uh, the camp started in 1969 as a Long Island, and is a Long Island institution. Thousands of boys and girls uh, have learned to bounce a ball at the All-American camp. My mom uh, was the office manager for the camp. Uh, my brothers and sisters went to camp, and we worked the camp. My, you know, all five of my children uh, have come to the camp, as did uh, my nieces. And I'm just scanning the room for them. There they are. Um, we played I Beat the Coach. We learned the lockery method. We learned about attitude and about my dad's utter lack of vices uh, in his life. <laughs> um, we set camp records. We played I Beat the Coach. Uh, we did the Pepsi Hot Shot Contest. Uh, we saw the best of NBA stars and college coaches. Uh, if you were a basketball figure in the 60s and 70s in the Northeast, uh, you met my dad and spoke at his camp. Uh, my dad created an institution. Uh, he took his obligation to mentor the next generation of coaches very seriously. He was constantly on the lookout for prospective coaches who worked at the camp, and he always brought them into his inner circle to hear his words of wisdom. Coaching at the camp was a way for them to get in the circle. Uh, it was the approach to coaching, not any specific techniques that these coaches learned and my dad taught uh, every day at camp. He wrote two books, the first about Joe Lapchick and the second about his 74 state championship team. He'd never written a book before, so he used trial and error and the help of many experienced writers and editors, uh, and he learned to write. Uh, he had no idea how to sell a book, but he learned to do that too. Um, he went on Mike and the Mad Dog to promote the book. Uh, he defined his type A personality by asking what's next five minutes after the celebration when he got his doctorate. He's literally walking down the hallway. He's like, okay, what do I do now? Um, he didn't sit still. Um, he wanted to do the next thing. Um, by the way, if you are an MD on Long Island and you got a call from Dr. Gus Alfieri, um, asking for an emergency appointment for one of his children. Uh, that was my dad pushing the envelope again. Um, he used it more in restaurants. He may have. I, just, I know, I remember times when we needed an appointment. We call up, like, yeah, hey, we'll get you in in six weeks. And like, hello, this is Dr. Gus Alfieri. He's like, oh, doctor, we'll get you we'll right in. When my dad wanted to do something, he did it. And if it didn't exist before, he created it. There were no sports books clubs in America until Gus Alfieri wanted to have one. St. Anthony's never had a basketball, wasn't a national, wasn't a basketball powerhouse until Gus Alfieri showed up with a square basketball under his arm. Uh, there had never been a person starting a day basketball camp on Long Island until Gus Alfieri showed up. He wanted to honor Joe Lapchick and his 74 team with a book, but he'd never written before, so he'd never been an author before, so he became one. How, he, how did these things happen? Um, because my dad just decided to. Uh, most of you saw my dad's hard shell exterior. Uh, my mom was the one that exposed the soft underbelly. Honest and humble, putting him in his place on a regular basis. They loved each other so much. Their devotion to each other 
throughout these 63 plus years was beautiful. More than anything, my mom's gonna miss my dad very much. My dad was a presence, he was a factor. He was the absolute furthest thing from mediocre. He was impossible to ignore and even harder to forget. He was a giant of a man. A man who was determined at a very young age to make something in, of his life, and he most certainly did, because he decided to. Now there's no more work to be done, for he has done it all to his final breath. He spent his life chasing, chasing that which was just out of reach. Scholarships, friendships, championships, relationships. He would help all of us without rest, and now you can rest, Dad. The struggle is over. There is nothing left to chase. As it says in Matthew 25, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. I love you, Dad. Man, I miss you already. Very good.